I was involved with a bunch of guys I went to art school with, and we were cranked up at making art and doing paintings and being part of the scene. It was so easy for us just to show your work through a gallery, and they immediately accepted me uh, having an exhibition. I graduated in 1961, and in 1962 I had my first show. In 1964 I had another one been in another gallery, and then, then another one in 1968 when I started doing three-dimensional work. I mean, I was... I was just right on. I was on top of it, and uh, no one else was doing what I was doing. I'm one of the, we're one of the last few dinosaurs welding and doing our own fabrication, as far as I know. I, look, I go on the internet and look to see if I can find any art, any sculptures. Doing, I can't find them. Before I was connected quite well with her, because I knew Tim Ayer, she was a big fan of mine. But uh, him and Bryden Smith, they uh, put me in this show called Boucherville, Montreal, the terrific show, where I did my two installation pieces for the show. And, uh, I couldn't produce large-scale works today with the, with the manner of how I do my work, because they are, I want them to be manipulated or to viewed and moved around. In other words, my largest works display themselves quite well inside or outside. If you put them on the lawn outside, and when you want to cut the grass, you can easily roll the pieces over, cut the grass and roll them back. You know, but uh, most sculpture isn't like that. <laughs> I got hooked up with uh, teaching art with uh, Concordia University and I got to know a few more English speaking people and that seemed to be a bit of an influence and I got to know a bit what was happening in Ontario and Quebec and all that stuff and I wanted to expand my vocabulary with sculpture mainly working in metal and I couldn't do that in my loft in Montreal because I couldn't weld and I was more interested in the industrial application to making art. And uh, I decided when I moved to uh, Tamworth that I would uh, pursue that and not pursue installations that I was doing in, in Quebec because it was the most practical way to display my work is dispersing it into space and moving it around. I started working on the configurations, you know, of uh, just inspecting the work, and that and then that developed into making uh, movable art. Let's say after the steel pieces that I went through a period of, and uh, since they were so heavy, heavy enough not to manipulate or practically not manipulate, uh, I conditioned the viewer to walk around the work from their viewpoint, their eyesight angle, uh, to uh, 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 look at the surfaces of, of the work and not stand up as a monolith, uh, as a, a icon, uh, icon graphic uh, type of sculpture, which I still don't do today. children <laughs> it's it's called uh, Boromean monsters and I figured you know now I don't know how people interpret the Boromean configuration in their mind I, I see it quite easily the Boromean configuration this is what I want the mind to move around and shift and not to be fixed on one thing or the sensation of color it's similar to looking at 
through one of my pieces because you actually see the front and the back of all my aluminum pieces because they're open. They're a graphic type of sculpture, right? I don't deal in solids. I never did. And the only colors that seem to work in this configuration for me are red, black, and blue. with one shot colors red yellow blue green whatever they were with the textured surface the aluminum you know as a drawing or with a color shot on them and they were a reference to all my friends the plasticians were totally involved with color and not to a color and flat Sherbrooke, I decided to dedicate the show to the, my memories in Quebec with all these guys, although I never met Marie Paul, Marie Paul or Bordeaux, but I knew all the other guys, and I uh, decided to homage, do an homage to them. So I, I did, and it's, I bought two small canvases, and I instinctively did something that would sort of connect to one of these guys or the other, but I wanted to design a frame and pay homage to the artist and individually, whereas uh, the, the uh, Riapel has sort of bird shapes around and in the frame because he was an outdoorsman and all that stuff, and uh, I was a bit of that too. And uh, Bordeaux, I did that coil that ran through it. I don't know why it was sort of give it a, give it a bit more depth to the thing. But the frames were, were what I was really interested in. is the man, you know, the mother of invention. And de Kooning was one of my favorites, still is one of my favorite painters today. Ulysses was a great influence on me, you know, he did uh, painted sculpture, early work, and then he started doing his uh, columns, because he, he worked, he made his work with a lathe and a milling machine. Julia, uh, Julio Gonzalez was very important to me because he was one of the first artists that used welded metal. He was the first artist to use welded metal in his constructions. And uh, then in, in the States, uh, there was uh, David Smith, who I was very fond of, I liked his work a lot. And they worked as, uh, they, they, they worked with hands-on. They did their own work. What, what, one of my favorite, my, my two favorite Canadian sculptors, by the way, are the Rabinovich boys. They've been, we've been very well connected for the years. As a matter of fact, Royden spent the summer here, and th these guys were brilliant. I got to see a lot of stuff that came into Montreal, and uh, stuff that I, when I went to New York, we used to travel to New York a lot to uh, see all the art galleries and the bars, and. Uh, it was kind of a routine that we had, and uh, and we were all connected as a good community of artists. Uh, amongst them were the uh, some of the plasticians like Guido and Claude Cousignon. 